You see the crowd, you hear the crowd. The show's about to begin. I'm Joe Zone on WFSB and UCOM Plus. I'm just gonna help guide us through the ceremonies. Sit back and enjoy the next hour. First night. inside Gamble, you're watching the Yukon Drumline. And now we're getting ready for the introduction of players. Yukon Nation, let's remind people how loud it gets in this building. How this is the toughest place for opponents to come into college basketball. This season, let's show the world Basketball's worst nightmare! It's time to meet our 2023 
Green! 
Chase, number 33, Apostolos Romano! A 6'2 sophomore forward from Fort Wayne, Indiana, number 34, Ayana
seen the and heard loudly the introduction of the players when we come back we'll be talking to coaches and players and watching the skills competition
All right, welcome back. First night in stores. Gino Oriam is joining me for a little bit as he enjoys the festivities. Gino, 50 years I've been doing this, and this is the first time I've experienced it this close, this first hand. You wouldn't think after 50 years I'd be doing something new, but this crowd, the adulation, I mean, if that doesn't put a bump in your step in practice, I don't know what would. Yeah, you know, the the whole point of today, tonight, I should say, is uh, it's for our students, you know, and our and our fans that, you know, they love they love these players, you know, they they want to see them, and it doesn't matter what in what form, they just want to see them and they want to show them their appreciation. And uh, we're very fortunate here, you know, that we've got this passionate fan base. And uh, a night like tonight, that's that's never been more evident. You've walked that stage a lot of times. You were as excited tonight as any time we've ever done it. <laughs> yeah, I think because we didn't have to speak, you know. So they told us, the coaches, you don't have to say anything. But I, I, I like the fact that our players, even though this, for some of them, their fourth time, yes. it's like they're little, every time they'd see this, it's like they're little kids, you know, and they, they get a chance to perform. And, um, and I get caught up in that. The coaches get caught up in that. Um, we had some of our coaches jumping up and down over there when they were introducing. And they're our players, and they were going crazy. So it's, um, it's always exciting. Does tonight's energy carry over for a practice or a couple of days, or is it back to business as usual tomorrow? I don't know. You know, uh, I, think, uh, I think tomorrow, you know, we could, because it's early tomorrow morning, um, I'm sure there'll be some carryover, especially when you re when you remind them that this is what they want to see. They want to see you at your best. They want to see you play great. And we're like, this is a reminder that we're in the entertainment business. As much as people say, we're in the game of basketball. Really, these people come here, they want to be entertained. And every game that they come here, it's our job to entertain them. And this, this is proof to them that that's what it is. All of your players and coaches got a great ovation but there's no doubt the level went up when they introduced Paige it looks like the crowd is really really ready to see her back on the court no no question about that I mean some of these kids have never seen her play live you know they weren't here her freshman year it was a bubble year anyway and then last year she didn't get to play at all so I think our our fans our students <clears throat> They couldn't be more excited for her, and and I know she said that she's never, never been more ready to play basketball than she is right now. Do you see that? She says she's ready. Yeah. She's got more. She's got her own personal feeling yeah, yeah. about it. You're seeing it from out yeah. here. What do you see? Yeah, she's bigger. She's stronger. She's missed the game, obviously. So the fact that she's getting a chance to play because she loves playing, and when it's taken away from you. And now you, you're giving it back. I just think the the emotions are going to be really raw, and they're going to come out of her every every game. Basketball to me is one of the few sports. We had a we had a pause. It's one of the few sports where you can simulate a game in practice more so than other sports. Right. So you can see yeah. what. You know, it's not just practice. You're seeing all of your players in your team That's in right. game situations. That's right. And you try to put them in as many of those situations as you can. And what happens is some days they get it right, some days they get it wrong, just like it would be in a game. But what you want to see is you want to see them grow. You want to see them learn from their mistakes. You want to see them adding a couple things to their game and being a little bit smarter about the game. So. The more situations you put them in in practice, the better they're going to perform in a game. At least that's the theory, anyway. What do you like the most about your team right now today? I think we play with a lot more pace than we did last year. We uh, we have more bodies that we can throw out there. I think the three freshmen are going to play a lot of minutes, which is really good. And they've added a lot. 
uh, a different vibe, a different energy to the team. So right now I like where we are from uh, intensity-wise, energy-wise. Uh, but we have a lot of players that didn't play basketball last year that the learning curve, it's, it's, it's got to happen. You know, we Paige didn't play, Ice didn't play, the three freshmen didn't play. So some guys are going to have to play out of position because Jenna's out for the year. So it's going to be a little bit of time, but I like so far what I see. You've got great leadership because you have experience. Is there a fine line between your leaders know too much, that they know too much and you can't coach them anymore? No. No, I think they they want to learn. They want to be they want to be great leaders. They want to they want to be be able to set a great example for the younger guys. Um, they're they're they get a lot more freedom than they than they've ever had from me, uh, and they know that if they abuse it, those things are going to get cut back. So they just have a great time because they're laughing every day at the stuff that I'm saying to the freshmen because that was them. I got your schedule here. Is it hard to not point this one's big, this one's big, yeah. this one's big? Can you keep them not looking at those yeah. games? Yeah, you have to do that because there are so many big games in our non-conference schedule yeah. that it's hard to pinpoint which one's the biggest one. So you just want to make sure that we're thinking we need to be better tomorrow than we were today. And you know, we didn't win all these games here by looking past anybody. So that's the goal every year. <laughs> we're watching the three-point competition. I got just Gino for another minute or two. Do you have <laughs> Go ahead, Wolf. This is great to watch. I know. I'm watching Nika because she's been working her butt off shooting the ball. It's just, just a bunch of kids having fun. Well, and isn't that the whole point? That's the whole that's point. It's it that's gets whole way point. past that yeah, all yeah. the time. But Yeah, they're just a bunch of kids having fun. And they hang out together. They know each other, both teams. So it's uh, it's been a lot of fun watching them. Before I let you go and throw the break, do you have a dream three, a dream four, a dream five? Or are you still in your matchup phase where you're just trying to figure out who works with who? Yeah, I think. You know, when you think about Nika, Paige, AZ, and Aaliyah, you know, those four are constants because they played the most games here, big, big games anyway. And then the others, we got to see who fits in with who. And it may not be the same five all the time, but those four, you can pretty much say, yeah, that's a pretty good four. That's a pretty good four. Gino, thank you for your time. I know you want to enjoy more yeah, of this. Yeah, I want to see this. Can't wait to see the games. Good luck yeah, this season. Thanks, Joe. We'll be watching from way out here. Good luck. I love it. Thank you. All right, Gino Oriem, when we come back, head coach Dan Hurley will be here and some players. You're watching first night on UConn Plus and WFSB.
commercial. I can't hear you. Oh, okay. I need Dan, yeah. Welcome back to First Night here in Shores. I'm Joe Zone. We're on WFSB and UConn Plus. The crowd, huge, big. I'm not gonna talk over the announcer, so let's find out what the next contest is. And waiting for Dan Hurley, the defending national championship coach, to come on up. National Championship coach Dan Hurley took a little bit of time out. Dan, I asked you know this, I want to ask you. This crowd, this adulation, that's a big thing to live up to when you have a basketball team. The basketball capital of the world, right? Yeah. Um, you only get a crowd like this for just purely men's and women's basketball. Um, you know, no, no act. We didn't bring in a, a singer or a rapper uh, to draw a crowd like this. Just want to see what their team's going to look like this winter. Got the best fans in the country. For you, for your staff, this energize you a little bit. I know the players are young, and you're, <laughs> but you know you're you're a veteran. You're, yeah, energize you a little bit. I think it's um, you, you're so focused on the season. We, we've been we've been practicing really hard since June. So there's obviously a lot of anticipation coming into the season. You know, we, we're, um, we know our opportunity um, to potentially make history and, and try to go back to back and have another great season like that. So this is like, a, um, it's getting cold out, Gamble's rocking. You know it's time to, to start playing soon. And I think UConn Nation appreciates that you're even thinking about back to back. I mean, that's in your nature. You can't think of anything but winning the whole thing again. I think maybe 2007 was the last time it was done. What are, who's told you stuff? Your father, people who've maybe been there, won one. What the pitfalls will be as you go along? Yeah, I think the, the natural human re, uh, reaction when you have great success is obviously to, um, to get complacent. So yeah. I think as the leader of the program, I'm just so hyper aware of, of any type of mentality or habits um, within the team that shows even a little bit of complacency. I'm just fighting so hard to, uh, to root any of that out and keep the program hungry um, and attacking the season because it's a chance to make history. I think what helps you it's not an act for you to be that way. You don't have to go look for it or ask somebody, how do I get fired up? We've watched you coach. So you're not gonna have to go someplace that you haven't been. Now, do you have to bring it up a level? I, I can't quite see it going up a level, but maybe you do. <laughs> I mean, I've been, I've been tougher on this team yeah, really. than any team I've ever coached in the preseason because you know, at UConn, you, you always have a target. But this is even greater target. This is a big target. I mean, it's a big one, and it's um, you know, so this team's gonna have to be mentally tougher, more together, better execution. So I'm coaching these guys hard because no, we know we've got great potential, and um, and we, we want to give the state of Connecticut and our fans another spring like we did last spring. Yeah, last season I think you were you were chasing a little bit. This year you're being chased. Does it change the way you do things? Well, my teams always play like we got one chip on this shoulder and another chip on the other shoulder. Right, right. And, you know, we're not coming into this year 
preseason number one. Um, there's always going to be some level of disrespect, you know, to UConn because we're so, so blue collar as a blue blood. Um, we're never ranked as high as we should be because, you know, I think. Other programs generally get more hype than us in the preseason, but no one wins championships like UConn. It doesn't matter where you are in the preseason. I've heard coaches say that, but still, I mean, I looked at the, the league standings and somebody had used third in the league. I mean, I know it's a good league, but you're the defending national champs. I'm saying who's, so I don't know how even, so one of the things I get asked by a lot of people I hang with, how's Donovan, how's his foot, I saw him come out tonight. I didn't notice anything. What are you? What are you seeing? Well, I'm sure there's a reaction on social to Donovan not being in the boot and walking real well. Right. So, you know, he, he we were very fortunate that the nature of the injury, you know, will allow him to be back relatively soon. And if not, you know, catch the whole season. You know, he should be in good shape. As long as we're smart with the injury and he takes care of himself. Because without him, that it's changes harder. things. It's harder. It changes things. But you've said this is an opportunity for other players on your team to get more real practice time and more opportunity to show what they yeah. can do. Yeah, we, you know, last year, uh, Jordan and Andre both got hurt in, in the lead up to the season and missed parts of the early non-conference and it did help us develop the uh, bench it did help us you know develop donovan and alex the young guys so missing donovan is is, is not good for us long term but short term definitely good i'm gonna let you go in a second what do you like today best about your team i, I love um I, I love the four guys that i know starting players for us in, in, uh, in Tristan Newton, Cam, uh, Alex, and Donovan. You know, I think that that two fifth-year guards in the backcourt that are really good players, offensive players, defensive players. Alex should have been Rookie of the Year in the Big East last year. He got robbed. And then, um, you know, the franchise center. Um, and then it's a obviously a talented freshman class. Uh, obviously, Steph Castle is going to have to be as good as advertised for us. And... Yeah, we think he is, and um, yeah, I mean, building that bench is going to be the key to the season. Last thing, I know you had the ring ceremony tonight. You keep talking about we got to move on from last year, but when they when they keep giving stuff like this, so is the ring ceremony? You have it on your, you have it with you. I showed it. I had the Dave. I got it. It's gone. Is Took is it this off. the last the last vestige of last season? And now we say, we got our rings, the banner's coming up opening night, it's over, let's go. Yeah, I mean, I felt that way, you know, since, uh, you know, since June when the new yeah. group got here. Yeah. And, you know, listen, you, you, it's a hard thing to do in sports. U UConn makes it look easy yeah. sometimes, but, you know, teams have great years and lose in the Elite Eight. And we won three more games than teams that had Great years. Great years. So, you know, I get it. It's 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 a lifetime achievement. But as you can see with me, like I, I don't want to look at that thing again until this summer coming up. Hopefully, when we're designing another one. Dan Hurley, thanks for taking time out. Your Joe, players are out there having a great time. Yeah. We'll see you next week in a Big East Media Day. Congratulations. Joe, thank you, brother. Good job, man. Great thank to see you. you. All right, the defending national championship coach Dan Hurley with some time. I'm Joe Zone. We're here first night, and wow, what a night it's been. We'll be back after this commercial break. Tremendous job. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yeah, I'm over this shit. <laughs> I just want to start, you know? Start playing. Wait about it. Thanks. Yep. Good. I can, I can, I can. 
come over here. I'll just, I'm gonna stand there, sit so I'm not in people's way. I can see it here. If somebody wants to come on, I'll do them. Otherwise, well, someone just came in. It's okay. Someone just came in with the DB. Well, the DB is going to want to see this. So. Yeah. All right, we're back. First night, you've seen. Welcome back to first night in stores at Gapel Pavilion. I'm Joe Zone. We just spent some great time with the two head coaches, the Hall of Famer Gino Oriana, the defending national champ, Dan Hurley. Now we're going to just go out to the action on the floor and let you enjoy what 10,000 fans are enjoying here in stores. I'll let you watch.
Let's start with Caden Samuels makes some noise. And Caden Ross. Caden's are you ready? Your time starts in three, two, one, go!
you heard it, Team White. Are just about wrapped up here at Gamble Team White in the skills competition has just knocked off Team Blue. All right, fans, if I can have your attention right down here at center court, I'm going to be round of applause for Paige Beckers, who has a few words for you. Let's, we're going to let Paige Beckers take us out, okay? I think that's a good way to wrap it up here from Gample. I'm Joe Zone on Channel 3 and on UConn. Plus, the music plays. Aaron, I didn't hear a word you said tonight, but I hope you enjoyed the show. Back to you. <laughs>